Hey everybody, welcome to another video. This one's gonna be a little different. I feel like the audiophile nerd types are really gonna enjoy this one. Let me know if you like this style of video. This was just me and Caleb sitting and listening to tracks that we had recorded on the previous video. And we're talking through them, we're pushing the EQs to the limits, we're kind of talking about how we would use these in mixed contexts. What's useful, what's not, what are the differences that we're hearing, notions that we realized as we were doing it. I'd be curious to know what your thoughts are as you're listening. Now, YouTube might do some weird stuff to the compression of this. Go download the files for yourself if you wanna hear them. They're free on my website, link in the description. And again, nobody sponsors these videos, so hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe if you wanna see more stuff like this. I'm genuinely curious if you guys like this style of video, so let me know by either hitting the like button or by letting me know in the comments down below. If you hate it, let me know that too. If you do, I won't make more like it. Enjoy the video. Oh, hi, and welcome to another episode of I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm gonna tell you about it. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up, camera. You're not done yet. <laughs> so you pick whichever one you wanna start with, and then you can go solo back and forth between. Okay. Um, well. I, like there's a difference there. <laughs> I'm like hesitant to comment because yeah, I'm going to I'm going to chew on the strum first and then I'm going <laughs> to and then I'm going to comment. Okay, so I don't feel about this the way that I thought I did. Okay. I, so I, I still feel like the FET, I don't like what happens when the acoustic like hits really hard in it. Like when I attack the string really hard, I feel like the FET responds in a way that feels gross to me. I don't know better <laughs> terms than gross. Like it feels like it gets harsh. Okay. Um, but what I thought I liked about it before in the top end sheen and then like the low end, when I thought I liked that in the tube, I now feel like listening now with some space that it feels to me like the tube, or I'm sorry, the FET is like controlled. Like it actually feels very controlled um, in a really pleasing way, like a finished way. There's, it's it's like an upper mid-range thing to yeah. me. It just sits there and it's locked. But the other stuff, like the low end kind of moves around a little bit. The top end's not as fluid. Yeah. I don't know how else to say it with the tube. But like looking at it through the context of what does a tube do to the sound, I think it's more about what a FET circuit does. Yeah. <laughs> and how good that FET circuit is designed because the tube is just doing its thing. And I think what we're hearing is the FET circuit. So it's like there's that natural compression because there's more things to hit. And this is this could all be blowing total smoke. It didn't end up the way I thought. Did you have the same feeling about the FET just now? It kind of does that C800 thing, like that top mid, high mids, presence, finished thing. But I really like the bloom of the tube. Yes. Where the tube feels like it's 3D. And it depends, it depends what you're doing. I, like if you had a really intimate thing, a tube, I mean, you can't make the FET sound like the tube, but I feel like you could make the tube sound like the FET. Yes. You know what I'm curious about? And like, this is such a vacuum, the way that we're experiencing this because like what what's the context of this acoustic guitar the way i'm hearing it right now i actually wonder if the player knew that it's like if we had a lot going on around and the player knew that it was a small space that the acoustic was fitting into i probably would pick the fet right now which i'm surprised yeah. by but if it was if there was a lot of room for the acoustic guitar i'd probably pick the tube same but how i normally mix acoustics i'm normally going for the percussive thing yeah like, I don't necessarily want that, I don't want to hear every dynamic thing with the acoustic, because most of the time it's pop. 
big right. driving country yeah. or worship where there's a thousand other things happening. And it's almost like the acoustic guitar is kind of like a tambourine. Yeah. Where the FET would be perfect for that. I think I think doing the tube could get lost initially. Yeah. Unless it was a very like solo acoustic and cello. That is not how I thought I would feel about. Mm -mm. I'm a little biased towards tubes. I'm a guitar player. <laughs> They're tubes. <laughs> We're kind of conditioned that way. But I mean, going into it, I don't think it's about picking a favorite. I wanted yeah. to know what a tube does. Right. And I think I'm even more confused. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think this answered anything. It's so tough. Yeah. They are very different qualities. Yes. they. It is like apples and oranges. And really, it needs a context, and that's mm -hmm. where it would shine. So was that... Okay, that was the... Oh, that, that was, was the, the 13. Which is the small diaphragm? The small diaphragm. Okay. One. Gotcha. So these are the big boys. Which one do you want to start? Um, uh, the FET. I feel like it's more exaggerated. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Very much so. The and if you're listening on a phone, Lord help you. Sorry. <laughs> Bless I'm, you, as they say in the South. Bless you. But this, I mean, this is dealing in minutia. Yeah. But right. in context in, in what's happening, it doesn't feel like Yeah. No, especially that. On the small <laughs> diaphragm, it was like, oh, pick your flavor. On that, it was like it's still pick your flavor, but it's like exaggerated which flavor you're very much so. But now, now we, now I probably need to find words to describe it. Really liked the tube. It was very, you used the word 3D before. It felt very 3D and open. There was a lot of like bloom and depth to it. Mm -hmm. And all of the like percussive nature was right up in my face as I was yes. listening, even though they're balanced. As close as I can. <laughs> uh, go here, listen to the strum. I'm trying not to look at it to know when you switch, <laughs> but I can tell when you switch. Yeah. I'm trying to see like which one, what characteristics can I pick out Yeah, and then look up. I, I'm i having like a very distinct, like I, I, on this particular mic, I love what the tube sounds like for the finger style stuff and what the FET sounds like for the um, picked stuff because, really? because I think it would sit really well in a mix, like a FET. The way the FET sounds, it sounds really tight and controlled and it has a really like, it's very bright across the top on the mm -hmm. FET, which I feel like is, you know, if you're making a broad stroke for acoustic strumming, that's probably what you would end up with. I wonder, I wonder seeing like how hard you could push that. That's a good point. So like a 12K shelf and stuff. Let's copy it on both. And this is just to exaggerate, like see how usable is that top sure. end. <laughs> I feel like the tube could go on for days. Yes. Like you could make it as bright as you want and it'll never get like gross. Yeah. The FET will eventually. I, I see what you mean by like you can make the tube do what the FET does, but you can't make the FET do what the tube does. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. So like if you wanted to have that extra intimate 3D thing, you're not going to get it with the other. I mean, yeah. you're splitting hairs. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get great records with either one, okay? Yeah. But 
we have both, and it's really interesting to see what a tube does on the same mic. It's not what I expected. Not at all. All right, here's the pretty electric guitar. Pretty. 017, so there's, these are still the big boys. Okay. And I've got, this is where I have a 57 and the 017 tube and the 017. Okay, gotcha. Have fun with this one. <laughs> I'm gonna start on the 57 because it's so familiar. So the 57 <laughs> has that separated thing. I always feel like there's a distance between me and the mic. Interesting. Or the, uh, me and the amp with a 57. Not that that's a bad thing, but I feel like you can never get a 57 close enough to an amp. That's so interesting. To get that like presence. And maybe it's, maybe it's the cheap transformer. I don't know. I have never heard that said before. And I feel like it rings very true. After hearing you say that, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Which is interesting because they're also so like articulate. Like mm -hmm. that's one of the things about a 57. It doesn't sound bad stacked up against, I mean, what is a $4,000 mic? You could get 40 57s <laughs> for the same price. <laughs> you could get 40 for one of the tubes, 20 for the FET. <laughs> so this is a big price difference. But man, I mean. I felt like the tube here was super 3D. Oh yeah. I feel like you could reach back, grab it. <laughs> Especially considering all that effect. Or actually, what effect, is there a reverb in the room I have here? a very slight reverb going on on, it, on all of them. They're doing okay. the exact same thing. So okay. it's like an 8%. So if we want to hear it without it. Feel like is a very interesting way to after you said the like 3d texture thing i was curious like okay but there are effects in there how are they being captured by the mic and the the clarity of those effects behind the signal itself mm -hmm. on the 57 and on the fet both feel like there's like some saturation to them interestingly but on the tube it feels very lush like there's a lot going on behind the mm -hmm. instrument itself so i'm weird. surprised by that I don't understand it. <laughs> I don't quite understand what I'm hearing. There's a clear difference. Yeah. And then this is getting heavier. It just has like like a vowel sound. Like you can hear a vowel sound the whole time, like a rang. Yeah. Like right up in your nasal cavities or something, where the others don't have that. You saying that the amp feels farther away with the 57, I don't think I'll ever be able to unhear that after sitting here listening to the difference. I don't think that's a bad thing. No, it has its place. Yeah. Like it's they're very usable. I'm just saying uh it's distinct. Mm -hmm. It's very distinct. And I didn't notice it before. <laughs> And again, so like in this context, the FET, the way that it like gets a little gritty in response to some of this stuff, I feel like it, it works better with something like this. I feel mm -hmm. like it works much better when something is already a little on the growling side. Yeah. And the tube is just, I feel like the tube just spits out exactly what's in the room. Like there's nothing is in the way of the signal itself. It just spits it right back at you. Oh, this is when we attenuated it. 
we wanted to turn it down because we weren't sure if we were hitting the That's tune right. too hard. So here's here it is turned down with starting with the fifty seven. <laughs> I mean, that, that's about as close as I could get them gain-wise. And they don't sound like they're the same gain. So, you notice a massive difference with that tube when we were worried about, like, what the sagging and the attenuation might do? I didn't notice, when we attenuated it, I didn't notice a difference there, but I felt like it got darker. Yes. When we turned it down. Yeah. But I don't know if that was the amp, that you know? probably was. And okay. I, it's actually good that you mentioned that because the, I remember when looking at the attenuation for this amp that they were like, that's kind of the only thing to look out for is you're going to lose a little bit of top end as you go down. That makes sense. Knowing that. So like, I don't think we were hitting it too hard to the point where the tube was doing anything. Weird. Yeah. I thought that it was surprisingly similar. <laughs> it's interesting how much of my gut reactions as we were doing this have changed now that I'm sitting here and hearing them all back to back. A lot of them are different, honestly. I don't think there's a bad choice. No. <laughs> so these are the 13s. Okay. Just to start with one. Here's the 57. Less noticeable there. Again, yeah. The small diaphragm is not as distinct. I feel like with what I would do with the guitar anyway, cutting off a lot of the bottom end, yeah. cutting off a lot of the top end, Right. I think the big differences are going to go away. Now, in between the large diaphragm and the small diaphragm, I like this a lot better. Oh, interesting. Than the O17s. I think the 13 is really cool, which I tend to like small diaphragm condensers. They're anyway. very like concise. It's a very concise tone. It like... I imagine would sit m like very cleanly in a mix yeah. quickly. Uh, that's that's the big thing. You can have too big of a guitar tone. So, and all this comes down to context. Here's the one I was interested in, the bomblet. So here's the 57. <laughs> Pretty cool. Huh. I like the bomb lid above them all. <laughs> That's really it. I thought it was so cool. So it is not so it's it's uh it's a FET, right? Yeah. Okay. It does not respond the same way the other FETs do. Mm. Like it's, can we try the 7 dB boost at 10K or whatever it was mm. on this one? Yeah, you do that with a 57, it gets gross. I mean... Like, you could pull a lot of top end out of the bomb. Like, it takes EQ so well. It's uh, that... I feel like this test, whatever this is, <laughs> that you just came up with on the spot, I like the way that <laughs> it... Like, it, it really quickly shows how brittle those frequencies are, which can be hidden. I think, like, tucked in with everything else, it doesn't seem like it. And then you bring it out like that, and it's like, whoa, okay, that's not... 
super usable. On the bomblet, I didn't feel that way at all like I did with the um, large diaphragm mm -hmm. when you added that boost. It didn't do this. It didn't break down. Yes, it didn't. The bomblet Which is did weird because it's way cheaper. Really? Yeah, about half the cost. Is the bomblet like a new one in their series? or? I don't. I think it's becoming one of my favorites for using it for kick out and then seeing it here. Yeah, we we will need to try it on like vocals against the large diaphragm. I feel like that'd be really cool. Mm -hmm. I would love to hear that. Um, and what else? I mean, I'm, I'm liking it. I'm thinking we should try mm -hmm. it. Some different place. That one's the standout for me. Yeah. Very surprised. I don't know that I learned anything. <laughs> I just have more questions. <laughs> A tube didn't break up like I thought it was going to do. Yep. I uh, I think probably I maybe checked some biases with tubes. Yes. And I think I learned a little bit about the... You boosting that FET like, really made me realize, oh, okay, that's why. That's what he meant by they don't go the <laughs> other way necessarily. <laughs> that, made a, that made a difference. None of these are a bad option, but I'm, I'm really shocked at how natural a tube is where I thought it would be interesting. interesting. Let me know if you guys made it this far in the video. And again, if you watch the whole thing, I would love to know if you like this style of video. It's different for the channel. It feels more relaxed and we're just kind of having a conversation and capturing that conversation. And if that's something you guys like, we could definitely do more of this. If not, let me know that too. That's useful information for me. <laughs> Thanks guys. I'm Resident Loser Jeremy. I'll see you in the next one.